Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining me. This is my 2024 rendition of what I consider my main squeeze. So this very similar to last year is still a 14.5. I find that to be for my area, a pretty good barrel length. Uh, it gives me uh, enough effective range. I can reach out four or five, maybe 600 meters uh, with really good lethality uh, while still being something I can use indoors or in an urban environment in the event that I needed to. Uh, some things are way different and some things are the exact same parts as last year. However, this is what I would consider to be a completely new build. Now, probably not one of the first things you'll notice, but what is actually a really big deal is the rifle sling. Now, this sling is not the same one I used last year. This is a Warrior Poet Society two-point sling uh, with the uh, quick disconnect buckle and a uh, bungee. Now, I know what you're thinking. Bungee slings, oh, they'll, they'll, you know, you'll drop your gun and it'll hit you in the dick or whatever. You know, there is something to say about that. However, with this sling, uh, it doesn't have the same issues as a lot of the cheaper bungee slings or a, a one point bungee sling, especially as bad. Uh, this doesn't really have those issues. What this allows you to do is not have to fiddle with uh, an adjust with a rigid sling and you can have the gun uh, tight to your body. Like you see here, I can, you know, operate. I can, you know, go pick things up or whatever. And I don't have to worry about the gun flopping around. However, if I do have uh, a situation that arises, I can quickly just bring the gun up and the sling has just enough give in it with that, with that sprung, bring the gun up and I don't have to fight the sling. I don't have to adjust or anything like that. I can immediately get to work with the gun. And if I didn't need to swim out of it, I can do that. So I can, you know, dip out of it that way if I need to. The advantage to running a two point sling like this, same as last year is, uh, you know, simply being able to do that is uh is pretty great uh if you need to work in front of you and the you know rifle is not your primary thing you're dealing with but you still want to keep it on you you can just sling it on your back like that and if you need to you can just grab the buffer tube spin it around like that and you're back in the exact same position you were before can't really do that as easily with other styles of slings especially a three point that's why i prefer two uh but yeah it's a it's a really great system i like the sling a lot it does have this uh he calls it a jedi buckle uh, I know this style of buckle is used other places too. He's not the one that came up with it. However, it is pretty awesome. So you take this little tab right here, you just pull on it, it unlocks, and it comes completely apart. So if you need to bail out of your kit quickly, you can do that without having to fiddle with cuties. Now then again, cuties are not the worst thing to deal with, uh, but it locks in really nice. It's nice and durable. The sling has given me no issues at all. Next up, we'll go with... Uh, the muzzle device and suppressor. This is a Polonium K from Otter Creek Labs. These have been, for some reason, an obtainium. I think it's just because they're a really good sounding suppressor. I uh, only have a mm, couple hundred rounds through this thing so far. However, I've been very impressed with it. I am still using ASR. I, I don't know, some people, it's a very polarizing topic. I have found ASR to be very good as long as you maintain it. Uh, it works really well. I like the taper shoulder that the uh, muzzle device indexes off of. For a muzzle device on here, I do have the ASR three prong closed tine that Silencer Co. now makes, and I like closed tine flash hiders. It tends to beat up your suppressors on the inside just a little bit less. And it goes on there just like so. The weapon lead I'm using on here is a Surefire Turbo M340. Uh, it's a good light. It's very bright. Uh, I do have a 3D printed kill flash that I put on there. I did not design this one, but the files are out there. If you do need to go get it, just search for 3D printed kill flash. It'll come up. Uh, yeah, so it's a Surefire Turbo. I do have a DS00 tail cap, which is a little bit more redundancy for light sake. So I can activate it either by here or by the uh, pressure pad right here. As you see here, I have Rail scales and a hand stop. These are all 3D printed. They're not real ones. I'm not paying that much money for something I can make at home. The barrel on this beast is a Geisley Cold Hammer Forged Chrome Lined 14 5 inch taper profile uh, with a one in seven twist. I have found it to be <laughs> surprisingly accurate with something like M855, which is not a very accurate ammunition. I can group this thing about two MOA with the ACOG, which is pretty incredible. However, I think that's right on the bleeding edge of what that ammo is capable of. If I switch to like a 69 or 77 grain OTM uh, from a reputable manufacturer like IMI or something like that, I could probably group this thing under an MOA if I had to guess. 
The handguard on here is the Sons of Liberty Gunworks M89, as well as a matching Sons of Liberty Gunworks uh, upper receiver. Uh, this has a pretty cool indexing pin on it, so the rail slides on directly to the upper receiver uh, with an indexing pin to keep it from rotating around at all. Uh, that makes more difference, especially if you are using an IR laser. I don't have one on here currently, but I have one coming. And this rail locks up on this gun very, very tight and it is extremely rigid. The bolt carrier group is still the Centurion Sand Cutter. Uh, it's a pretty awesome, pretty awesome bolt carrier. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Uh, I have an LMT bolt head in it, uh, LMT firing pin, and LMT cam pin. So it's LMT and Centurion for the uh, bolt carrier group. I have a Radiant Raptor charging handle. This is the non-SD model. I do want to pick up one of the SDs. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. The optic setup, because I know everyone likes to look at optics and stuff like that. This is the Trigicon TA31A COG, same as last time, it's actually the exact same optic. I have upgraded from the offset Holosun uh, 403R to an Aimpoint T2 with the Knight's Armament battery cap on it. And this is all sitting on one of the Unity COG mounts. This is a pretty sweet setup. It allows for both the optics to be centered. Uh, so when you roll the rifle over, it is the uh, exact same dot height for both optics. And it is, it's just a pretty sweet setup. I have no problems hitting man sized targets out to five, 600 yards with this optic. Going on to the lower receiver, it is a Sons of Liberty Gunworks lower receiver. I have a Geisley SDC, I believe it is, the Super Dynamic Combat Trigger. It's the same one I had last year. I just really liked it, don't need a reason to upgrade. It is, uh, I don't really think there is an upgrade. I think that is one of the best triggers on the market, bar none. I have Radiant Talon 45 degree selector safeties with the uh, shortened. Uh, right side of the gun so it doesn't interfere with my firing hand. Now I do have the Voltor A5 H2 buffer system on here. Now basically what that is, if you're not familiar with it, it's a hybrid between a rifle length buffer system like on an M16 and a carbine length buffer system that's on M4s and the vast majority of other AR-15s on the market, especially the commercial grade stuff. The Voltor A5 system does help a little bit with uh, softening that recoil impulse just a little bit more, as well as for the bigger guys that like a longer length of pull. It allows for the stock to come out a little bit further as well. The pistol grip I run on here is the BCM Gunfighter Grip. I really, really like the way these fit in my hand. Uh, other grips work too, but you know this is the one I prefer. In the grip, I do have a set of springs and gas rings for the bolt carrier group. It's a nice little thing to have uh, in case that the bolt carrier group starts getting uh, sluggish or not working the way it should be. On the other side of the gun, I do have a Radian bolt release, uh, and that is a, a pretty nice little upgrade over mil spec. Uh, it's nothing too crazy, um, and it's very similar to the Geisley. I find that this snags on just a little bit less stuff than the Geisley Maritime does. And then as far as the stock goes, it's just a B5 Bravo stock. As you see, I do have the Ranger band on here, so I can stow the sling onto or underneath the Ranger band just like so to keep the slack out of it. Again, this might work for me, it might not work for you. You always have to base your gear selection off of what you need, not necessarily what other people have. Uh, a lot of times people will base their, their kit and their guns off of something they saw on the internet and that might not necessarily be what the best thing is for them. So if you need a 10.5 or an 11.5 because all you have is uh, you know super urban stuff with a lot of twisty roads where you can't make long shots, then you know so be it, that's what you get. On the flip side of that, if you are living in you know, the plains of Nebraska or something like that and you have the opportunity on occasion to take an 800 plus yard shot, something like an 18 or 20 inch barrel AR or something even you know, in an intermediate cartridge uh, or a heavier cartridge, you know, like 308 or 65 Creedmoor or something like that, it might be a better option for you to go that route. Now, I always advocate for people building an AR-15. I think that the uh, amount of ammo you can carry is probably more important than the amount of shots that you can put in a one inch circle at 100 yards, because realistically, wars are won by logistics. Uh, the people that have more bullets are usually gonna win. Uh, it's just statistically proven if you look at history throughout. The people that can supply their troops with bullets and band-aids and food for the longest time usually are the ones that prevail. Thanks for stopping by guys. If you do wanna see more content like this in the future, featuring guns like this or other guns, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe. Go ahead and like the video and comment down below. That'll boost the algorithm up. That'll encourage me to make more content and it will show this video to more people, spreading the word that guns are only scary to the people that are doing bad things. And remember, do something today to make yourself better for tomorrow. We'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.